In today's video, we're going to be talking about types of variables and how to differentiate between those variables which are quantitative and those variables which are categorical. So when working with different types of variables, we either have quantitative variables or categorical variables. And to tell the difference between the two, all we have to do is ask ourselves a fairly easy question, and, and that is, does our variable tell us the quantity of something that is being measured? If it does not tell us something about the quantity of something measured, we're dealing with a categorical variable. If it does provide us with the quantity of something that is being measured, we're typically dealing with a quantitative variable. So let's go ahead and just work through an example here. Here we have a list of different variables, and now we have to differentiate between are they categorical variables or are they quantitative variables? So let's go ahead and start with salaries. Is salaries categorical or quantitative? Well, salaries tells us something that is being measured, and that is might be your hourly rate, it might be your weekly rate, your monthly rate, or even your annual income. But either way, this is telling us some value of something that's being measured. So we're gonna call this a quantitative variable. What about the models of car in a parking lot? Say the last time you went to the mall. Well, if you looked around, there might be Hondas, there might be Toyotas, there might be Jeeps, there might be Chevrolets, or there may have even been a Tesla. But this information tells us nothing about anything that is being measured. It's just telling us about the models of car in the parking lot. So in this case, we're gonna call this a categorical variable. What about the numbers of viewer on viewers on YouTube? So the numbers of number of views on this channel, well that tells us about something and that tells us the number of people who have viewed this video. So in this case, we're gonna call this a quantitative variable. What about the last time you were at the airport and you looked at the arrival board and you saw the little on time versus delayed? Well, that doesn't tell us any information. It just says on time or delayed so we can we can generally bucket those airlines into two different categories that are either on time or delayed. So this is a categorical variable. What about types of soda in the refrigerator? So if you opened your fridge, what types of soda are there? You might have Pepsi, you might have Coke, you might have Sprite, you might even have Mountain Dew. Again, this tells us nothing that's being measured. It just tells us the types of soda in your refrigerator. So there we're dealing again with a categorical variable. What about the average speed of service in a drive-thru? Perhaps you're a manager at McDonald's and you're interested in, in that variable, in that measurement. Well, right there, it tells us something that's being measured. That's the average speed. So we should be looking at a quantitative variable. Now, when we're dealing with quantitative variables, there's generally, from a high level, two different types, those which are continuous and those which are discrete. So a continuous quantitative variable can take on an infinite number of values. So a good example of that is something like weight. When you step on the scale in the morning, it will give you a, a measurement, perhaps say 160 pounds. Now, if you have a fancy scale, it might say 160.2 pounds. And if you have an even fancier scale, it might say 160.25 pounds. Of course, the number of decimal points after the, the pounds is infinite and it's limited to the sensitivity of our measurement device, or that is our scale. Of course, we can measure the weight of an atom, so we can get down to a very small value. So the measurement of weight can take on inf an inf infinite number of values, so we'd label that as a continuous measure. Alternatively, we have discrete measures. And this is when um, a variable takes on a countable number of values. So for example, the number of patients in an emergency room, in this case, it's a countable number of values. We, we know that we have, might have one, we might have five, we might have six, seven, eight. Typically when we round to a, a, a digit, we have a discrete value. So let's go ahead and look at these quantitative variables. We can agree that they're all quantitative variables. We've seen some of them before, but now let's label them. Are they continuous or are they discrete variables? Well, salaries. Salaries we typically measure to dollars and cents, but of course you can measure monetary worth down to an infinite number of decimal points so long as it makes sense to you. So we can label this as a continuous measure. What about blood pressure? Again, same thing with blood pressure. This is a continuous 
measure, simply limited to the sensitivity of the measurement device. The number of cars in a drive-through, well, you're not going to have 2.5 cars in a drive-through. You're going to have one, two, three, five, six number of cars in a drive-through. It's a countable number of values. So in this case, we're going to label this discrete. The number of views on YouTube, when you look at the little view counter underneath this video, how many views are there? Well, again, it's a countable number of values. So we're going to label this discrete. And then the average speed of service rounded to the nearest minute. And in this case, I'm just going to underline nearest minute because that's an important piece of information. When we deal with time, time is typically a continuous variable, right? It would be limited to the sensitivity of our measurement device or our stopwatch for measuring time. But in this case, you can get all the way down to a nanosecond and beyond. Um, but in this case, we're rounding to the nearest minute. So this would be a countable number of observed values. So again, this is a, an example of a discrete quantitative variable. So when we're working with our variables, we've already established what are quantitative variables and the different types of quantitative variables. So what happens when we're dealing with a categorical variable or when our variable tells us nothing about the quantity of something that's being measured? So when we work with categorical variables, we typically have two different types of categorical variables. We have nominal categorical variables and we have ordinal categorical variables. So what is a nominal categorical variable? Well, we've worked a lot with nominal categorical variables, but when there's no logical order that we could place those variables in, so models of car, you couldn't say that a Toyota is better than a Honda or a Honda is better than a Chevrolet. Um, there's no logical order to that. It's just a model of car. Then we have ordinal categorical variables. So a good example of that is places in a running race. If I was in a two person race against Usain Bolt in the 100 meter dash, Usain Bolt would decisively win the 100 meter. He would come in first. But since it's an only, only a two person race, I would come in second by default. Now, what that wouldn't tell you is the distance between us when we completed or the time between us, between him crossing the line and me crossing the line. It would be most certainly be considerable, but no less, I would come away in second place. So Usain Bolt would be first, I would be second. That tells us about a piece of information about our order of completion of that race. So we'd label that an ordinal variable. So let's go ahead and just explore some categorical variables in a little bit more detail. And let's label them, are they ordinal or are they nominal? So brands a personal computer, Mac or PC, uh, Apple or Acer, uh, so on and so forth. But in this case, it tells us nothing about the order. So we're gonna label this nominal. Blood type, are you type A, type B, type AB, type O? Um, you can get into AB positive, AB negative, etc. But again, this tells us nothing about the order, so we're gonna call this a nominal categorical variable. What about socioeconomic status? Low income, middle income, high income. If you've ever completed a survey for either a census or research purposes, you've likely had to complete this. Well, in this case, it does tell us a piece of information and um, whether low, middle, high, it tells us about the order in which you might place that. You might reverse or reverse order it being high income is, is one, middle income is two, low income is three, or you might just logically order it as low income is one, middle income is two, high income is three. And e either way, this is telling us some piece of information about this variable. So we're gonna label this as an ordinal uh, variable. Birth order, if you have siblings or know people who have siblings, you've likely have heard them or yourself have described yourself as the oldest or the youngest or the middle um, child or somewhere in between if you're in a family that's bigger than three. Well, in either piece, in either way, this piece of information, I was the first born, I was the second born, I was the third born, that gives us a piece of information about the order in which you were born. So we're going to call this an ordinal variable. And then finally, when we talk about the categorical variable of sex, well, this doesn't tell us anything about the order uh, of, of sex. There's no logical way to rank one over the other. So again, we're just going to label this as a nominal variable. That's it for this video. But if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.